Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the following edition of Two Up Front, presented by Three Lines Pub, broadcasting from beautiful Milwaukee, Wisconsin, in the Attention Air Media Studios. I'm Baxter Colburn. And this is Simon Provan. Simon Provan on a Tuesday. Wait a minute. Something's not right here. Why, are we, why am I talking to you on a Tuesday? Baxter, everything's right here. Is it? We've decided to do the show live again because we oh. miss doing it. Our listeners have missed us being live. They were like, you know, we know you guys are making mistakes. We want to hear those. <laughs> we want to hear those time. edited out. <laughs> Wait, when, you, when you butcher a player's name or something, we want to hear the real version of it, not the, uh, the edited version where it sounds so clean and so smooth. Basically is what you're telling me. Exactly. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, Fair yeah, yeah, that's it. Right. Well, speaking of names that are interesting to say, we have Seattle Rain FC uh, Manon Mellis joining us in the second segment. Simon, he had a chance to uh, sit down and chat with Manon, and I think it was a pretty good interview, too, from what you told it me. It was great. It was really great to get her insight. You know, she just retired from the Dutch international team, uh, having a quite a year with the Seattle Rain, recently named... NWSL player of the week, not this last week, but the week before. So, yeah, it's just, you know, just a delight to talk with. Absolutely. Well, we are excited to have her on uh, at 12.12. We will be broadcasting now Tuesdays and Thursdays from 12 to 1 p.m. Central Time, live right here on Spreaker.com. Uh, you can also listen to the show on demand on iTunes, on the Sports Podcasting Network, on iHeartRadio, on Spreaker.com, and, of course, on our website as well, too, uh, www.2upfrontsoccer.com as well. Of course, you can also find us on Facebook, 2 Up Front. You can find us on Twitter, at 2 Up Front Soccer. You can find our own Twitter handles, at Baxter Colburn, at Simon Provan. Absolutely. We encourage you to interact with the show uh, live. Obviously, Twitter is the best way to do it, but if you are listening on Spreaker as well, you, there's a, a chat or a comment section as well too that we can see your comments uh, in real time as well so we have a, a great show in store for you today we're going to start here in our first segment that we call the kick around uh, with a general look at some things taking place in the wide world of soccer first and foremost uh, for those that support FC Dallas and those that support the New England Revolution aka myself for the for the second team not FC Dallas now Boo Dallas uh, it's the US Open Cup final tonight down uh, in the great state of Texas at 10 o'clock Eastern Time, it kicks off on ESPN. FC Dallas hosting the Revs, an underdog. Or maybe not so much anymore, based off of how these two teams have played recently. But either way, we know you're a big Open Cup fan, Simon. Your thoughts about this game tonight? Well, first of all, it's, it's great that it's on ESPN. It, yes. It's getting ESPN on too. national TV, which it well deserves. Uh, I do believe U.S. Soccer probably had to buy this spot. But, of course, the disappointing thing is, Baxter, if you live on the... East Coast, it's not till 10 o'clock that you get to watch the game tonight. Well, even us, though, that are but, in Central Time, right, too. Central Time, the game will literally kick off at 9 o'clock for the Revs and for Dallas. It's a Tuesday night. It's a school night. You know, these players are pushing for, uh, of course, FC Dallas for a supporter shield. The yeah. Revs trying to get in the playoffs. So it's not the best time for these guys to kick off. But where it is, the game is sold out. We'll see how many people actually show up that have tickets. Uh, either way... I'm going to watch this, Baxter. I'm going to do my darndest as well, too. I mean, obviously, you've, you, uh, I was going to ask you, too, what, what time do you put your kids to bed on a school night if, if it's, you know, hypothetically, if you were in Dallas and you're, you were a diehard FC Dallas fan? like Nine o'clock. Oh, my goodness. That's just, that, that's irresponsible, I feel like. Come on, do a seven, even a seven o'clock, I think, is even fine. Well, and that's, that's where, where I'm saying is it's probably the only time slot U.S. soccer could either buy or it's yeah. part of their TV rights package with ESPN, and ESPN said, look... You know, this game isn't that big. We're, we're not going to risk a prime time time slot I can on understand this game. That. Uh, but as a, as a sports network, you have a responsibility to the exactly. players as well. Especially with how much everybody's been pushing soccer recently. I mean, we know the 2010 World Cup was a good match to light, but then with everything with the 2014 World Cup and the U.S. women winning in 2015, like ESPN and Fox Sports have been all, yeah, soccer, we actually care about soccer, but... This is a little disappointing, honestly. I feel like they could have done better. And I'm, I'm glad that, obviously, it's going to be on a prime time. And I'm sure people will still watch. But you, you run into that issue there with the late start time. Absolutely. But let's, let's talk about the game, Baxter. Yes. Uh, very special meaning, obviously, for FC Dallas because it is the Lamar Hunt Open Cup yeah. trophy now. And Lamar Hunt was the founder of what was then the Dallas Burn. And, of course, I do believe the Hunt family still owns FC Dallas. And Dallas is 
been a little wishy-washy in their regular season with MLS. You mentioned it, New England Revs coming on strong, two, two wins. win streak right, right now. I mean, and this is one of those things, too, where it's a, it's a rematch of the 2007 final where New England won 3-2. to two. That, that itself was a bit of a barn burner also. That was a lot of fun to watch. I actually pulled up those highlights the other day back when guys like who've been on the program before. Wells Thompson ended up scoring the, the game-winning goal. I believe Steve Ralston, Taylor Twelma, they all chipped in for goals on that game as well, too. And it was it was a very exciting match through and through from, from everything that took place back in 2007. Of Absolutely. And, and let's go back a decade before that. Believe it or not, that's the last time FC Dallas has won a trophy since really? 1997. That's when they won the, the Open Cup. Wow, okay. So uh, even more special meaning, of course, for FC Dallas. But look, the winner of this game goes on to the CONCACAF Champions League. Now, we know some clubs care more about that tournament than others, but FC Dallas has a good chance of going to the Champions League with the way they're playing in the regular season as far as, you know, get a few more things together. But they win the Supporters' Shield, they're in the Champions League. Obviously, yes. they win MLS, they're in the Champions League. If somebody from the East wins the Supporters' Shield and FC Dallas wins the West, they're in Champions League. So, FC Dallas has a lot of ways to get in Champions League they this do. season. They do. They've got, a, I think, a much easier track oh, to absolutely. get there, obviously. On the flip side, for the Revs... Unless they can somehow win MLS Cup, this is their only opportunity to get into next year's CONCACAF Champions League. Well, this is their only real viable option as well, too, to potentially win a trophy this season as well, too. No offense to them, but the playoffs are a lot more grueling. They have to, they're going to face a lot harder teams in the MLS playoffs. U.S. Open Cup, no offense to any of the, the lower division teams or anybody that they've had to face. The Rams have had a, a semi-decent, fairly easier road compared to having to deal with New York consistently or e- either in the other New York or Toronto or if they had to play L.A. or other teams like that. So I think the Rebs have had a, an easier tr- time to do that, and I think this is going to be the moment where I think they might actually be able to pull something off. So let me ask you, prediction? Yes. Prediction. It's always hard when it comes to New England because obviously they've done well the last two games. They beat NYC FC 3-1, which is, I feel like is a pretty resounding mark, and then they beat obviously Colorado 2-0 before that. But New England always concerns me in any cup final. I mean, it, I'm, a, I'm a Rebs fan. I've been around long enough to know that New England, when it comes to a final Never plays out well. However, I'm going to pull my homer cap out here and put it on and say I think the Revs are going to win, but it's going to be another like 2-1, 3-2 sort of battle. I think it is going to be a 2-1 battle, but it's going to be the opposite way. I think we're going to and see I won't FC... be surprised. Sure. Yeah. Well, I think we're going to see FC Dallas win this if for one reason, Baxter. New England's got to travel, and they're starting very late. Yes. FC Dallas is going to take it. It's a, t- it's a 10 o'clock kickoff in Revs time. So a lot of those guys, especially, are in bed by that point. They Absolutely. have to be as a pro athlete. Now these guys are saying, what, well, we have to play 90 maybe plus minutes of soccer here and well, actually try to compete? And two, you're looking at their priority list. What are they going to put more more priority on? I, I would think if you're the Revs, you're going to put a lot of priority on this game. I think you're going to go game. after it, yeah. Uh, but if you look at FC Dallas... They don't have that much to lose, and that's a good place to be in when you're playing because of all their ways they have yeah. to get in so the Champions you, League. So do you think that FC Dallas maybe might trot out a, a B or a B-plus squad I don't, tonight? I don't think so. I think I think both these teams are going to put their best starting 11 out mm. there. I, if anything, they perhaps switch their goalkeepers around. But look, maybe, Chris, yeah. Chris Seitz for FC Dallas has said since day one, this tournament has been a priority for them. Hmm. Uh, but I, yeah, I think we see both clubs put out their best start in 11. It's a cup final. That's what you should do. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Let us know your thoughts, too, of course, about who you think is going to win the U.S. Open Cup at 2 Up Front Soccer at Baxter Colburn at Simon Provan on Twitter. All right, uh, you want to go to England for a brief moment here in this first segment, Simon, to talk about a team near and dear to your heart, which I believe is a bit of a surprise of where they are right now. It is a bit of a surprise, but of course, if you're an Everton fan, it's a happy surprise of for course. you. Of course. They destroy Sunderland at the Stadium of Light, Sunderland's home field, yep. 3-0. Lukaku, or a hat trick, <laughs> and a beautiful hat trick. Yeah, I mean he he was a force to be reckoned with. Everton undefeated Baxter, and on this young season, they're sitting in third place. How interesting! Are is they that the too? Leicester City this year? Uh, <laughs> no, they're not. no, I don't think so. No, they they've got Everton is too good of a team to be called Leicester City. Uh, I see. That's the thing. Okay. If Everton does well, people will say, "Well, it's about time." If Everton does bad, people will say. It's Everton. But if a Hull City, if a Middlesbrough, if a, a SWAT, you know, a, a Swansea were to just take the league by storm, people would say, there's your Leicester City. Everton's got, you don't have a guy like Lukaku on your team and other star players mixed in there and be called Leicester City. I got you. Although, you got to remember, Lukaku was on a over 1,100 minute scoring drought. True. But this is the way to come out of it, right? No, I completely Three agree. Three goals. Uh, one more team I wanted to quickly touch upon, Baxter PSG. 
Seventh place in you lose League Zlatan. Un. You lose Zlatan, and suddenly, where do the goals go? Zlatan takes the goals with him as he leaves, basically, I think is how is how it works out. Well, David Elves? Elvis? Da- Danny Elvis? Is yeah. that who it is? He well, transferred they, as well, right? Well, so David, well, they, yeah, and they lost David Luis as well, Luis, too. Luis, that's so what I'm thinking that's of. That's that's Everybody's thinking pulling of. out of a PSG. It's all these Davids that have... David, Daniel, <laughs> it's just... <laughs> So they don't, they don't have that great defensive unit anymore. You don't hear a lot of anymore. Simons or Baxters in, in I, sports. I, I like it that way. Exactly. All right, we're going to run to a break. When we come back, Seattle Reigns, Man and Mellis is here with Simon Provan. Stay tuned. You're listening to Two Up Front, presented by Three Lions Pub. Futsal.com called in line, Dutch International and Seattle Rain FC leading scorer, Manon Mellis. Welcome to the show, Manon. Thank you. Well, Seattle Rain are fighting tough here to get into the playoffs, just a few points off. You've got two tough games left in the season. Washington yeah. Spirit up first for you, and then you finish the season against Houston. You're just a few points off that final yeah. playoff spot. Can you guys get yeah, there? And if so, what's it going to take? Uh, well, we still have a chance, yeah, but it also depends what the other team is doing, like the New York Flash. Um, they play against Portland this weekend, um, and we play against Washington, so we really need to win. We really need Portland to win, too. So uh, um, the New York Flash will not uh, have more points. So it's going to be an exciting game. Yeah, and i got to ask you, you got such a talented team. I mean, you got yourself, obviously, Megan Rapino on there, Kim Little, Kawasumi, Keelan Winters, etc. Granted, you've dealt yeah. with international call-ups. You've dealt with injuries, especially er- earlier in the season, also, again, including yourself. Yeah. Um, is that the main reason for the up and down with Seattle, or are there other things going on with the rain that, you know, you're at 666, you look at your roster, you're thinking, in all honesty, you probably could have done a little bit better this year. So, so what's going on with Seattle? Yeah, well, sometimes it's hard to say. And, of course, uh, we had many injuries, especially in the beginning of the season, so it was hard. We played with different star 11 the whole time. But sometimes it's also too easy to say because we still have a really good team. Um, and, yeah, sometimes we had really good games, and the, and the game after we played, yeah, were really not good. So sometimes it's just hard to say what's the problem. Well, I got to ask you. I got to ask you personally. Even uh, you know, even on a broader picture here, you were going to yeah. come over to the states a few years ago to play for Sky Blue FC back in the yeah. old WPS. Of course, that league yeah. did fold. Uh, you had an incredible career in Sweden, named Footballer of the Year 2010, won a couple of championships. So, what was it yeah. about the NWSL uh, that you had faith in this league that it would still be around when you uh, were recruited? <laughs> Yeah. Oh uh, well, I I don't know. I get the call from Laura in last year. I think it was the end of September, or the beginning of October, and you know I was thinking, of course, like, okay, is this league stable now? But it felt right, and uh, I looked it up on the internet, and you know I just felt like I had to do it now. Um, 
And I think this league is better than the other leagues. It's more stable. So I'm happy the league is still existing, and it feels like a really good league. All the teams are, like, good. It's not that you have three top teams and the rest is, you know, just playing for to be the best for it or something. Um, it's, like, even. And I think that's maybe also the key to a good league. Yeah, it, it is pretty amazing that, uh, you know, you consider Portland – was near the bottom of the table last year. Kansas yeah. City, of course, won last year the championship. Now things are a little yeah. bit flipped. You have Portland as one of the top two teams, Kansas City, struggling a bit this year. Of course, they've been missing some yeah. key players all year long. But but you're absolutely right. No matter what team you look at, there are, there are stars spread all over this league. And definitely it's a league that yeah. represents that any given Sunday mentality, that anybody can beat anybody on any yeah. certain day. Was was it the same in Sweden, or, or was Sweden more of having a couple of – top maybe two or three teams and, and the rest you kind of knew they would be in the bottom of the table middle of the table all season long yeah it was more like that most of the time there were three or four good teams with like all the Swedish international players and like all other international players um, and the other teams were pretty okay too but not like super good so you knew like oh okay this weekend you know we think we're gonna win uh, in this league it's like <laughs> You have to be 100% out, like, the other team is going to win. It's just really hard. <laughs> Laura told me before I came here, like, every game is a Champions League game, and it's true. No, oh, that's awesome. Uh, speaking of that yeah. conversation you had with Laura, the story is she convinced you within three minutes to come over to the NWSL. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, well, well, maybe not three minutes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a little longer. But it was the phone call, yeah. I was, like, uh, I played in the Sweden League for nine years and it felt like I wanted to do something different before I will end my career and yeah they call they called it the right time and she was really enthusiastic and she did it work good you know she was talking like the way I play and how she wants to use me and I think it's really important if I talk with a new team they know how I play so um yeah and of course I knew about the Seattle Rain and all the good players so for me it was just a great opportunity to go to the USA this is Two Upfront talking with Man and Malice on the shopfutsal.com call in line. I'd like to turn, Man, into your international career. Now, you recently okay. retired from the international game. You retired in March, but yeah. you were able to participate in a Women's World Cup 2015 with the Netherlands. You're the all time leading scorer for the Netherlands. You obviously brought that skill over to the NWSL. What does it mean to represent your country 136 times and to play in a Women's World Cup? <laughs> Well, of course, it's a big deal. It's it's like big to play for a country and also playing for such a long time. Um, and when I started with national team, that's 12 years ago, we were like not really good. It was um, not that professional either. And I think we improved so much the last 10 years. Uh, and the last year we played the World Cup for the first time. And that was also a really big thing, thing for our team and also the women's soccer in the Netherlands. You can see it's growing, and we got so much more uh, attention in the media. So after that point, we became like more popular, and more girls are starting to play soccer, and it's more accepted. So it's not only a big thing for me, but I think it's also good to see that we are developing the whole women's soccer in our country. Um, yeah, so that's a great thing, of course. So I got to ask you if. If the Netherlands calls up and says, hey, you know, we could really use somebody of your caliber right now, might there be a chance yeah. you'd come out of retirement? I don't know. I just had a feeling um, after our Olympic uh, qualification, we did not go to the Olympics, by the way. <laughs> uh, you know, it was enough for me. After 12 years, I felt uh, it was okay. And, you know, we have so many young, talented players. And I was on my way to the USA, so I felt like, yeah, I just want to concentrate on my club team and, yeah, that was it. But you never know, of course. I just go home after the season and we'll see what's going to happen. And they can always call, of course. But I don't know if I will say yet. Well, that does beg the question. Will we see you back in Seattle next year? I don't know yet, actually. Um, what I told you before, I'm going home first. It has been like uh, a hard season. It's not that long. I was used to be in Sweden for 11 months. And this is like almost seven but still, it was a really hard season, and I always want to go home first, um, taking it easy, and then I can make a good decision what I want in the future. Absolutely. 
You know, I know in uh, in May, speaking of tough times, you suffered a tibia fracture, which kept you out yeah. for, for a significant part of the season, yet you still lead yeah. the Seattle Reign with six goals, which is going to put you at about fifth or sixth in the league overall. And yet, congratulations to you. Just a couple of weeks ago, you're named NWSL Thanks. Player of the Week. So is it yeah. fair to say you're fully recovered from that fracture, or do you still experience pain in there? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I feel pretty good actually um like the beginning of the season was really hard it was a new team and everything was new and then i got my tbf fracture so um yeah that was like not a good start for me but after that i worked really hard and had some good practice week so uh i don't know i feel good and in the beginning i played as a winger and now after my injury laura uh put me as a central forward so i think that fits me better in this league and in this team so I feel good, and I just I hope I can score some goals in the last two games. Well, I, I don't know if you realize this. Uh, maybe you do, but do you realize you have 25% of Seattle's goals this season? Oh, no. <laughs> I did not think about <laughs> it. But it sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so responsible for a quarter of the goals on the season. It does make a fan wonder, had you been healthy all season, where would you be on the scoring chart? Uh, you know, Do you see yourself know. as possibly <laughs> top of the league? Well, that's hard to say. Um, <laughs> you know, I, it's, it is how it is at the moment. Absolutely. I, you know, I'm just doing my best, and we'll see where it ends. Well, speaking of where it ends, uh, unfortunately, as much as we enjoy spending time with each other and, and with players as yourself, our time does come to an end on this interview. So I want to wish you the best yes. of luck on your final two games. And uh, I know there's Thank a lot you. of fans that would love to see you back in Seattle. Uh, so, so let us uh, let us pull for that a bit. But thank you so much, Man and Mellis, for spending some time with us here on Two Up Front. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> All right, we are going to run to a break. When we come back, plenty of action to talk about Major League Soccer and, of course, other U.S. stories out there. Thanks again, once again, to Man and Mellis for joining us here on Two Up Front. Back inside the Attention Era Media Studios, it is Two Up Front, presented by the Three Lions Pub. I'm Baxter Colvin. And this is Simon Provan. Simon Provan. I have to make one quick comment here, Simon, about your last uh, your last interview you just did. But obviously, first of all, thank you to Seattle Reigns Man and Malice for joining us. That was a fantastic interview. You did a great job, Simon. Thank but you. But you, you said something nice about Seattle. You wished someone from Seattle something nice. Well, I did. Did you mean did. it? Or did, you get, did. did they pay you know. off to say that? Listen, I I enjoy the Seattle Reign. Their players, I enjoy the way they fight each game. Uh, just because they may be a rival of my, my team at heart, the Portland Thorns, mm. that doesn't mean I can't step outside of that and be an objective viewer 
Which is good. As a soccer fan. Yeah. Which, yeah. I, which is good, though. I mean, that, that shows your true character, I feel like. So, well, well done, Well, thank sir. you. Thanks. And, you know, it, it, it's also, listen, we, we've spoken with Manon. We spent some time, actually, both interviews with Seattle. I've always been. I, and I always <laughs> just happen to so, be so, busy or sick right, during right. those interviews. Like, no, nah, Simon, it's, you got this. It's uh, totally fine. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> so I well. talked to Melon, uh, interviewed Keelan. Winters as yep. well. Uh, what a she just an, an, announced her retirement. She and, did, uh, yeah. Kind of jumping into the in our NWSL spotlight here, Baxter. Yep. What a great way for her to finish her last home game because if Seattle makes the playoffs, they won't have a game at home. Mm. Well, she ends up scoring. Seattle ends up winning the other night, two nothing. Uh, Keelan was f- had a fantastic goal. Wins the ball in the box, makes a move to her right, slams the ball into the net with her right foot. That's a veteran and, move right there. You know, she's such a classy person that it's easy for me to end up liking the Seattle Rain <laughs> when you're talking to these these classy women. Sure. No, I, I completely understand that. But, I mean, it was it's obviously raises a, that, that win by Seattle changes a lot of things. And the loss by Western New York Flash changes things. Now, Chicago has booked their playoff ticket officially. Three teams are in the playoffs. They are ready to go. Portland booked home field advantage. They did. So it's Washington and Portland 1-2, and two, maybe switching to go to 1-2, and two, vice versa. We'll have to see. Uh, the Red Stars, they are going to the playoffs with 30 points currently. Maybe they'll be in third, maybe they'll be in fourth, depending on how the last game goes. Western New York Flash, they have 29 points. Seattle has 27. When you look at this weekend, you look at the teams they're playing, it's Boston, New York, it's uh, Houston, Seattle. I like Seattle's chances of winning that game, but at the same time, I like New York's chances of winning their game as well, too. Yeah, the tough thing that New York is dealing with is being on this four-game road trip. Now, we talked about did I say Seattle or New York? I think I said New York. Said, New, yeah. York New York is on is the, is on the long road trip. So yep. they, even though they have a, a good chance of, uh, I'm looking here at the schedule. Yeah, I'm just making sure. Yeah, they're playing Boston. So even though they have a good chance of, of winning this, yeah. this game, last team in the NWSL, the Boston Breakers, the fact is New York has not played at home in a long time. They still won't be at home. So it makes you wonder... Are their legs and their bodies just tired from all this travel? And does Boston's been looking decent these last few games? They have. I mean, they're they're going to probably finish either three and fourteen and two or four fourteen and two. They've managed to get into double digits for goals, but Boston has been two five and two at home this year. They're well, not they're not good at at home. And here's the other thing, Baxter. This game against Portland that. Western New York Flash lost. Mm. They came very close to tying it up. They were down 3-0. I have to admit, I actually I had to get one of my daughters in bed, so I stopped watching the game after that. Then I flipped on the highlights and saw that Western New York Flash almost tied this game up with 13 minutes to go, a goal in the 77th minute, a goal in the 80th minute, yeah. and almost a goal right in stoppage time from Williams, from Lynn Williams. Great ball from McDonald, by the way, who was also on the show last week. Um, I thought Western New York Flash may have pulled this off. So it's what I think is that Western New York Flash is going to be so hungry to have a complete game against Boston that I agree with you. New York does end up winning that game against Boston and breaking Seattle's hearts, who I also think will win their next game. Well, when you look at it, too, if you look at the top goal scorers in the league, it's Lynn Williams with 10 goals for New York, and it's Jessica McDonald, who we had on last week, with 9 goals. And it's, it's one of those things where you're like, Wow, they know how to put the ball in the back of the net. But every time I look at that, though, I think back to the game where uh, New York completely obliterated Boston and kind of allowed Jessica and Lynn to pad their stats a little bit because sure. I think they both sure. got at least two or three goals each in that game. So, Well, and then the flip side, you look at Seattle, beginning of the season, uh, tons of injuries. Yeah. You know, I mentioned that Train injury, tons of injuries. So it makes you wonder... How good, how high would Seattle be up in the standings if it wasn't for the injuries and all the international call-ups? I completely agree with you on that. I would be very curious to see what Seattle would be capable of doing, even if they had Hope Solo as well, too, in their lineup. Where would where would a, a dynamic goalkeeper, regardless of her issues aside, you take just the, the player, the body figure that is her as a goalkeeper, you may have pulled out a couple more close games if yeah. you had her all season. Maybe. 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 You goalkeepers know, yeah. are that weird position. You never know. We've seen the best goalkeepers have blunders, and you've seen the worst goalkeepers make unthinkable saves. You know, at the same time, the keeper that they have in there right now, I mean... She's doing well. She's she, doing, she, she knows what out. she's doing. She got a shutout against one of the best teams this past weekend. 2 nothing over the Washington Spirit. Yeah, Haley Kopmeyer has three total clean sheets on the season. Hope Solo has five, but... 
I obviously hope I was in for more games, of course, too. But it's going to be interesting. Let us know your thoughts, of course, who you think is going to win this weekend in NWSL uh, at 2 Up Front Soccer on Twitter, at Baxter Colburn, at Simon Provan. Uh, one of the things we also need to talk about, Simon, uh, is in pertains to someone that no longer is involved in the women's game on the playing field. Uh, but, but she revealed this week, Abby Wambach revealed this week, that she was doing a lot of off-field extracurricular activities while she was an active player. According to her, she uh, reveals that she used uh, alcohol and prescription jugs uh, while she was while she was playing until she got arrested for driving under the influence back in April. What are your What is your immediate reaction when you see an article like this come out? Wow. Yeah, that's that's what it is, Baxter. Um, you know, just I've never been that positive about Abby. I'm not about Abby. I'm mm-hmm. I'm not going to be shy about saying that. It does put things a little bit into perspective, however. Um, she's owned this now, and she's saying that, you know, I've been in this dark place. Uh, it's it's hard to put myself in that position because I've never had to deal with that. Yeah. You know, at, at the same time, you, you, you do kind of wonder, if I'm going to throw some negativity in here, is this for book sales? Hmm. Because she does have a book coming out, doesn't she? It's, she does. Uh, and she has a new book called this Forward. Is, she talks about all of this in the book. Yeah, and she's set to release this uh, today. Technically, she has officially released it, or maybe it's considered next week. It says Tuesday, which the article came out this morning, at least here on, on ESPNW. But either way, her new book is coming out. That is That is a possibility for people to be like, oh, I want to know more about this, but... It's a real issue, though. How many how many times, I mean, to use a, an American football thing, Brett Favre, he had issues for the Green Bay Packers for a long time with his painkillers, I think. That was more yeah. when I was a bit of a kid, so like I didn't know it as much what was going on. But it's so easy, I feel like, at times to to get hooked on things like that because as a professional athlete, your body takes an absolute beating day in and day out, and sometimes you just want all the pain to go away, and sometimes there's no easier way to do that than having a couple extra drinks or having a couple extra things here and there to... Make the make the nerves feel a little bit less. Well, and it's interesting too, Baxter, because it wasn't until she was in her twenties, really, that the drugs and alcohol, again, the drugs being the painkillers, yep. that, that it really started to take a hold of her. Uh, she does talk. She was on Good Morning America that just this morning talking about how the alcohol started at twenty one years old, and the the pain start the painkillers started a little bit later. Um, you know, she does. And this is where I do appreciate what she has to say. I mean, she really is owning this. So regardless of book sales or not, she's owning this. She's come out and said, look, people were pleading to have me get help. I was pleading with myself to get help. I wasn't listening to anybody. And then when she got that DUI, that was rock bottom for her. Well, for a lot of people, I feel like that would be. Sometimes you hear people say, oh, well, they got me that one time. I'm going to just keep doing it and see what's the worst that could happen. But it's a good thing that she was in a sound enough mind to say, you know what? No. I'm tired of this. I, I, I've well, still got a lot of life left to live. I don't want to end up behind bars or dead. Well, exact, well, her end up dead, thank goodness she didn't kill anybody when exactly. she was driving drunk. Uh, and that, thankfully, it only took, and I say only in air quotes, all right, but yes. it only took one DUI for her to really have an effect on her because there's been plenty of people, especially us living here in Wisconsin, Baxter. Yeah, all the time. Sixth DUI, seventh DUI, and they don't change a thing. So yeah. give her credit, a lot of credit for saying... I. Uh, I wasn't listening to myself. I wasn't listening to my family members. You know, she does talk about when she was younger and starting to figure out that that she was gay, that that was very difficult on Mm -hmm. her. A lot of guilt there, a lot of shame. I'm sure, It took her a long time to get over it. Yeah, and Um, and in today's society, too, you hear about it all the time. People still are having trouble coming out, even though it's much more acceptable. Right. Well, what I give her credit for is basically not coming out and saying, you know, it's because of my family, because of all the pressure I felt yeah. of not being able to come out. That, But she doesn't. She says, look, I this this was my struggle when I was younger. Uh, she came out and said that, you know, she, when when she finally came out and told her mom about what who she was being gay, that, that she was fighting these demons, that one of the reasons she played soccer was that she felt if she played well, her mom would forgive her for that. Yes. You know? I can't, again, can't imagine being in that walk of life. I, I can't either. It, it's a very interesting thing when you when you try to pinpoint it and think about it. And some people come out the other side better. Some people obviously crash and burn. But I think Abby also realizes how many people look up to her. And, I, and, I, and this is all playing the, the good cop in this, not saying, well, this is for book sales, which... 
Who knows? It's a great marketing tool if it is. She's going to sell a ton more books because she reveals much more personal Well, at details. the same time, that, that is what's in the book. So, of course, you're going to talk about what's in the book when you're, yeah. you know. So, um, yeah, but, you know, again, for the fact that, that she has owned this, that she's not pointing to her family, blaming them for any of this. If anything, she's apologizing to her family for not listening to them sooner. Yeah, and it, she's been keeping busy, obviously, as well, too, here in retirement. She's actually been campaigning for Hillary Clinton. She also hosts a weekly podcast on ESPN. Um, but she also says that she's been working on becoming a whole human being now that she's uh, not numbing herself anymore also, so which is great. I mean, you, you talk about someone that will likely be in and around the U.S. women's national team for a long time to come, whether maybe she does coach or consults or assistant coaches or something. I mean, that's a great tool to have if you know she stays healthy and in the right mind, or even throughout NWSL also. I mean, why wouldn't you want Abby Wambach to come and train your forwards or train your, you know, U12 girls team to, you know, how to score goals or whatever, too. Like, that's that's kind of a big deal right there. Absolutely. You know, the one issue I've always had with her, Baxter, came to the whole Magic Jack thing that yep. the players were all being treated like garbage, but Abby was getting paid well. So all she ever did was defend Magic Jack when you would have hoped that she would have came out and said, you know what, let's have... I got to I got to step up and, and talk mm-hmm. for the rest of my team. That's that's always been one of the things for me that has that has irked me about her. I'd have to agree with you on that one as well. Too. All right, we are going to go to another break, but as we do, we want to take a moment to uh, thank one of our sponsors of the show. Well, Baxter, you know, two up front is is a is proud to be presented by Three Lines Pub. I mean, not only are they a great sponsor, but they are a great pub to visit and enjoy a genuine soccer atmosphere. Not to mention the great food they serve. You know, just last week. I stopped in for some fish and chips. Ooh. And i got to tell you, Baxter, Three Lions Pub knows how to do a great fish fry. No, I completely agree with you on that one. Not only that, though, Simon, but uh, when you walk into the Three Lions Pub, you feel like you've taken across, you know, a, a trip to England, basically. Right. You, you almost ask them to stamp your passport when you walk in, and you, you feel like you're watching soccer at a, a Merseyside pub. But, you know, we can't say enough good things, though, about our, our presenting sponsor, Three Lions Pub. But you definitely need to go, not only just for the soccer, but also for the amazing food as well. Absolutely. So if you're listening to this, check it out for folks, Three Lions Pub in Shorewood. And uh, thanks again, Three Lions, for being a presenting sponsor of Two Up Front. All right, we'll be back with more right after this. You're listening to Two Up Front, presented by Three Lions Pub. Back inside the studio, two up front presented by Three Lions Pub. We are here at the Attention Era Media Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm Baxter Colburn. This is Simon Provan. Simon Provan. Are you ready for some MLS, sir? Yes, I it was a am. Very interesting MLS weekend as well, among other things that, that took place. Uh, I, I'm thrilled because the New England Revolution got a much needed victory against the quote unquote best team in the Eastern Conference. So that felt good. Yeah. Well, I, I had a great weekend for all my teams, Baxter. Yeah, you Portland did. Thorns won. Portland Timbers won, which was a huge win for them. And then, they, of course, they're going off to Champions League this week and now facing Saprissa, yep. where they will lose. Uh, <laughs> and then, of That's course, tomorrow night, as yeah. we talked about at the opening of the show, Everton with their 3-0 win. 
mm. over the mighty Sunderland. Ah, Sunderland. And the Packers won, too. So that's, and the Packers that's won. And the Badgers won, too. So look at that. Five teams. Boom, boom, boom. Are you a Badgers fan or are you a Texas, are you a Texas fan? I'm both. Are I'm you both? both? Okay. If they were to play each other, I'd be cheering for the Longhorns. Oh, okay. Good to hey. know. I went to school, they gave me money, and I gave them even more. So, hey. hook them horns. Go, yeah, say, go <laughs> horns, hook them horns. All right, uh, looking back, I mean, the first and foremost thing we need to talk about, of course, is the return of the... Not, he's not even the prodigal son. He's more like just... You, you, you won the lottery. You didn't win the full lottery, but you still won a, a pretty big lottery. You get Landon Donovan back on your team. He came back in the 4-2 thrashing of Orlando City. He was only on the field for about seven minutes and got some touches and looked decent, but obviously not enough to really know where he's at. Well, his own his own uh, evaluation of his play was, I came into a game where both teams were exhausted and I was the slowest player on the field. <laughs> <laughs> the game has evolved over the last year and a yes, half since has. he's been out. Yes. So, uh, you could make an argument that maybe he was the reason that the, the second and final goal for Orlando City happened. He was in the vicinity, but sure. it's, you really would have to be nitpicky if you want to say that it's his fault. Uh, looking at it, though, the weekend across the board, Vancouver, they got a victory. Before we step away from Donovan, sorry, jumping on you, Baxter. Klinsman said it's pretty cool. Did he really? Yeah, he I was, I've been wondering, honestly, what he thought. I, he said he's already been asked a lot of questions. Of I'm sure. Would, would he give Donovan an opportunity? And he just said, I think it's cool that Landon's back on the field. He just wants to give it another shot. He thinks the Galaxy are doing things right by bringing him back hmm. on slowly. And a lot of people are saying this is a publicity stunt. I'll be the first one to bash the LA Galaxy for doing such a thing. But I think it comes down to the fact that they're weak in the midfield. They're extremely weak in the midfield. I and mean, they knew a guy that was available. Exactly. And they played it well this last weekend, though. Gio DeSantos, Robbie Keane, and Donovan all on the field at the same time. Obviously, it would have been great to see Gerard and Zardes on there as well, too. But Sebastian Legit, he stepped up and played a great game also. He had a great week. He had a great week as a whole. So, be, be it as it may, when, when this core people or in this core group is healthy they're still going to be one of the best teams. Even if they're depleted in their numbers, when they, if the players that they have currently are still healthy, they're going to be a very, very dominant force. They just need a goalkeeper. Yes, Brian Rowe. Well, when's the, like, and we've had this conversation. When's the last time L.A. really had a, an elite goalkeeper? I know we've tossed Donovan Ricketts' name Donovan around. Donovan Ricketts. We've, we've ta- I mean, Joe Cannon was there for a while, too. I think Kevin Hartman spent some time with them as well. He did. So they kind of cycled did. some of those big goalkeepers for a while, yep. but... When you think of the LA Galaxy, you hear all the firepower, and then it's like, who's in goal? Well, Brian Rowe. Well, no, they had uh, Pineda in there, who That's played right. fantastic That's for them. Right. And then they had a contract dispute, so he said, adios. That's right, literally, probably. All right, um, so flipping over, though, back to Vancouver for a moment. They get their first win in as many weeks as I... I I, I thought, honestly, that my son was going to be born first before Vancouver <laughs> uh, was going to finally win a game. But they got a victory against the team that we thought they would beat. They beat Columbus 3-1. to one. Good for Vancouver. It was a much-needed victory. And we, I talked about this last week on the show, too. With that win, Vancouver, they're only four points out of the playoffs. They find themselves in the top spot outside of the playoffs because San Jose and Seattle are right behind them. But any one of those teams wins on any given day, the whole thing shifts and goes crazy again. But right now, Vancouver finds themselves atop the atop the not in the playoff teams. Right, the best of the worst, as they would say. I think right? that's a compliment, depending on who you ask. Well, San Jose still controls their own destiny because if they win their next two games, yeah, that puts them at thirty nine points. So that actually puts them in the last playoff spot. That is true. Uh, but San Jose the- and Houston. And Seattle, they all have two games in hand. Right, but San Jose is the only one that if they win both games, they're in the playoffs because that would put Seattle at 38 if they win their two games. And Houston's not going to make it, so there's no no point even talking about them. But the way Portland looked the other day, I was shocked. They looked so well in that 1-0 win they had over... um, RSL. Yeah, I mean, in RSL, let's be honest, they did not have a good week. It was a double week for those of you that play uh, Fantasy in RSL. Yeah, they came from behind to, to draw the Galaxy 3-3, but anytime your team but gives that, up that, three that, goals, That, that had more to do with Brian Rowe and his silly mistakes than exactly. it did RSL. That should, have, that should have been a 3-1 Galaxy victory, I feel Absolutely. like. Not a, not a 3-3 draw. And then you, you lose to Portland also. Uh, other notable scores, TFC is back in their winning ways again. Uh, they beat Chicago 2-1. to one. Okay, they beat Chicago. I mean, we know Chicago has put together a couple of games yeah. recently, but TFC's a better team. But I'll tell paper. you what, Joe Zeltador, he's looking good for Toronto. He is. He's been putting the ball in the back of the net, which we know he's capable of is, doing. Is he one of the most streaky players in the history of this league, though? Yes, I think he's one of the most streaky players in the history of ever. 
Like, like, like let's be honest. I mean, he can't he can't keep it together. Like suddenly he's you know the the he's the heir to the Clint Dempsey whatever throne at the U.S. Men's National Team or Donovan or whatever famous striker you have. And then other days people are like, why is he on this national team? Why is he even in, why does he even have a job? Like he's horrible. And you you can't you can't honestly say that you put all of your chips in Josie Altidore on any level and say, yep, he's a quality player. He can be. He can be. But he yes, doesn't know yes, how to be not consistent. All, right, right, right. Even without injuries. Right. Well, back to a team that I am surprised with, continue to be surprised with, is the ineptitude of the Montreal Impact. Oh, my gosh. Losing earlier in the week to uh, Orlando 4-1. How are they still and in the playoffs? On, on Saturday, they, they draw with Philadelphia 1-1. Two teams that I feel, with, this, with the power that Montreal has, should have handled and, and beaten both of them. Well, some of the things that it comes back down to are the inability of Piatti and Drogba to, to be consistent, to be dangerous players like they were for such a long time. Well, of course, Drogba didn't play in that, uh, I think it was the 4-1 loss. No, he did play in that. What, there was a game he recently didn't play. Anyways, I'm talking out of my mind. Regardless, so. though, when Didier Drogba's on the field, I don't care if it's a, a U5 Sunday Rec League or if it's an MLS game or whatever league it is, you should have an opportunity to win and or compete at a very high level, and Montreal hasn't done that. I don't know if that's a Drogba problem or if that's a Montreal problem. I'll tell you what, they went after Harry Shep, who they should have gone after as uh, Akam from Chicago. Yeah. Can oh you imagine goodness. him on that team? He w- to me, he would, be, he would be the guy that I really want to see goes him through. on a better team. Yeah, I do too. I would love it. I would love it. And I know he's a DP, so I know there's a lot of things that have to well, happen. Well, the big thing is, is there's talk of a lot of European teams wanting to buy him. Mm-hmm. I've saw that. I, I thought that there, I thought he might, honestly. I, well, I was a little surprised he still If they do, remained. maybe Chicago can finally do something with that money. Doubtful. They'll probably still lose a, an allocation or some spot oh, right. uh, yes. To, yes. To, some, to the Galaxy or the Red Bulls. It'll just magically go away. I don't know how. Speaking of the Red Bulls, mm. up to nothing on DC United at home. Then they give up two late goals and finish 2-2. You and I were a little skeptical of the DC United train. I think we I think I was I think I jumped on it a little harder than you did. Well, their their biggest problem is they don't start strong. They're their biggest always problem having is to claw back. Right. Yeah. Well, they're always having to claw back and they they tend to claw back and and I mean they had that 1-6-2 win yeah. again over Chicago. Well, you want to talk about someone that's streaky, it's Bill Hamid. That's yes, another streaky yes. good player. Someone that was supposed to be the next Tim Howard, the next you know elite goalkeeper in the world. Where? Where's he been? I know he played in this game. I saw a great highlight of him make a nice little like parry save away, but it was still 2-2 at that point. It's like, come on, Bill. Get it together. Yep. I, I, I don't know what to make of it. I mean, you look at the playoff picture in the East right now. It's TFC in first. New York and New York are tied at 44 each with points. Philly, 41. Montreal, 38. Orlando, 34. Orlando continues to lose. Uh, Montreal has not been able to put things together. I would not be still surprised if New England and D.C. find themselves in the playoffs when it's all said and done with it at that five and six spot. Absolutely. With how, with how they've been playing. As a Revolution fan, obviously I'm very happy with the Revs beating two of the best teams in the league, NYCFC and Colorado, in back-to-back weeks. Five goals, only one conceded. Uh, one point I do want to make, focusing back to the West, is FC Dallas and LA Galaxy are number one and two for the Supporter Shield. However, again, TFC does have that game in hand. But FC Dallas has done enough that at this point, even if Toronto FC wins their game in hand, FC Dallas will stay atop of the Supporter Shield standings. How interesting. Yeah, it's MLS is so tricky this time and of yet, year. And it is. And yet, FC Dallas loses to Colorado 1-0 at home. That was also another very surprising result. And that was one of those games, too, that I, I think we both took FC Dallas. I'm pretty sure we did. I, I had we a did. terrible week with my predictions. I know that much. Yeah, I didn't have that great. I took I, some chances. I had a bad fantasy week. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't good. I like to say I had a great one. I know you because you got like seventy four <laughs> points or whatever from Dos Santos. Something I did. Stupid I did. like that. I don't know. All right, we're gonna go to a break. <laughs> when we come back, we will close up the show. We've got our new MLS power rankings and some other final thoughts for you. You're listening to Two Up Front, presented by Three Lines Pub. Stay tuned for more.
Welcome back to Two Up Front, presented by Three Lines Pub in the Attention Air Media Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm Baxter Colburn. This is Simon Provan. Simon Provan. All right, let's move along with the show here. We've got some new power rankings. Uh, I, before we get to that, though, I think we should talk briefly, briefly, about the Champions League. Because the Champions it. League, it kicks off today. Champions! The Champions! I have to others. say that every time it's mentioned. I, I need I need to find a, a, that that clip that bit where it's just you know the da da da. Yes. <laughs> like I just, every time we talk about it, just boom, there it is. Uh, some games kicking off today for the Champions League. Uh, number one, are you going to watch the Champions League at all? Do you do you care? I, I mean, I do. I do, yeah. I mean, it's it's always hard for me because most of these games are midday, and I'm either here or I'm teaching or doing True. something with my kids. But I'll DVR games once in a while. But okay. yeah, of course, it's some of the best soccer on the planet. Of that course, I want to watch it. All right, games taking place today. Uh, FC Basel versus Ludogorets. Uh, Man City takes Borussia Mönchengladbach, or however you want to say it. I'm sorry in advance. Bayern Munich has FC Rostov. PSV Eidenhoven has Atletico Madrid. Dynamo Kiev, Napoli. Barcelona Celtic, PSG Arsenal. Benfica Besiktas. That's your games taking place today. A bunch more tomorrow as well, too. Wait, are we'll we picking any winners? Or are we, how do you want to do this? Do you even this? know who half these teams are? Well, I, I, I actually I think... Arsenal. I think, I think are, Arsenal is going to shock the world and beat PSG. Oh, today. that was that was the one. Yeah, that was the one I was going to say. I think Benfica. I was doing a little bit of research on this Baxter. Benfica is mm. almost unstoppable at home. Really? So I think Benfica is going to take wow. that. Uh, Napoli's got to travel a long way. I think to Dino, Russia. Yeah. Yep. So I think Kiev ends up taking that game. Interesting. Madrid. Uh, I think should Atletico should beat PSG. Yep. I, I agree with that. Man City should. win. Man City should win. Could be an upset. Yeah. Maybe. Barcelona's going to beat Celtic. Bayern Munich's going to beat FC Rostov. And I think Basel or Basel, Basel will beat uh, Ludogorets. Ludogorets? Ludogorets? I'm looking over your shoulder. Couldn't tell yes. if that was a T or Luda. an F. Ludogorets. <laughs> so there's our quick predictions. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, we'll talk about it probably more on Thursday's show. Uh, we've got some great stuff coming up for you, of course, on Thursday. We won't give you any hints officially yet. Just stay tuned to our social media pages at 2 Up Front Soccer on Twitter, at Baxter Colburn, at Simon Provan, and 2 Up Front on the great Facebook as well. All right, power rankings, yes? Power rankings. All right, a couple of swaps, a couple of changes. Some teams are in, some teams are out. Um, my number five this week is the New England Revolution. I Look, you don't beat two of the best teams in MLS. You shout out one of them, you score three on the other without getting a little bit of respect in my book, whether it's the Revs or not. That could have been any team. Sure. No, I agree with you. I, I give them respect, but I'm definitely nowhere near a believer in the I'm going New based off the last few games for some of these teams. So the okay, last couple of games here. Changing the rules again. That's fine. Go I ahead. I thought it's the Go last ahead. three games. Three or four <laughs> games. I don't know. Every time I try to do it, you're like, no, that's not how we do it. I'm like, well, let's write it down. Oh, okay. So it's me that's changing the yes, rules. Yes. You're yes, the one okay. that's always changing oh, okay. the rules. All right. I'm glad so we that, that the up. Revs are my number five team. Who do you have? I have New York City FC. So the team that they beat. How interesting. Yes. But you're looking at two games. I, we've always talked about looking at like five or six games. True. If any, you know, yeah, the Revs beat them once. Mm-hmm. But again, if the playoffs started today, my money would be on the Baby Blues beating the Revs. Well, Especially yeah, in a two-game playoff. because the Revs... Okay, so that's why I have them there. It's a power ranking. I know, and that's why I have NYCFC at number four, okay? Because NYCFC is still a better team. All right. But the Revs... Okay. The Revs won the last two games, which is important. So you wanted to get me angry just for getting... Yes. You just, okay, all right. No, just, 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 just to clear just, that it's up. It's fun to push a couple buttons every Good. once sure, in a while. Sure, sure. Yeah. Well, my number four is FC Dallas. They've, they've been shaky up and down. Okay. Uh, but I still believe that they're one of the best teams in this league. Why I don't I don't have them higher... Uh, is simply because I had them at number two last week. Uh, I think the three teams above them are playing much better. One of them, surprisingly. Actually, two of them, I would say, surprisingly. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, FC Dallas is not in my power rankings this week. They were number three for me last week, but I opted to to make a sub, make a change there with the Revs uh, and with NYC FC. I mean, yes, FC Dallas is a quality ball club, but they've been a little little shaky for me recently to, to fully put my my backing or my money behind it. Um, moving on to our number three, because we have the same. We have the number three, two, and ones as the same. Yeah, that doesn't happen very often. No, not this late in the season. True. So number three for us is uh, Toronto FC, uh, another victory. They've only really lost, I believe it's one time, I think, in the last probably seven or eight games. I might be a little burler. I might be a little, might be a little iffy on that, but... Either yeah, no, you're, you're correct. Okay. It's one loss in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine. Nine games. Okay. See, I mean, 
And yes, you know, we can look at this no and say... No, or not. Still right. a good team. Well, they, they, they only beat Chicago. Yes, but they also played in Chicago. But Chicago so has been playing and well. They've the been doing time. decent. Yeah, I agree with that. All right, number two, Simon, who are we at? No, number two is the, I will say, the revived LA Galaxy, not because of Landon Donovan, but because Giovanni Dos Santos has been finding the back of the goal like it's nobody's business. Yes. Yes, they had that uh, awful 3-3 draw with RSL that they should have won, but then they come back and beat Orlando... Four to two, convincing. It was four one before Orlando added that constellation Stoppage goal. Time. Yeah, yeah. Breck yeah. Shea with a nice little little finish there. And finally, our number one team in our power rankings, at least for this week, is the New York Red Bulls. Listen, they are on an undefeated streak that runs four, eight, eleven games. Baxter, yeah, they drew with DC United. They should have also won that game two zero. Some odd breakdowns there in the defense. Luis uh, Robles was very confused as to what was going on with his yeah. defensive backs. But Bradley Wright Phillips, my goodness, that man is on fire. Sasha Kleschen's on fire. Felipe's on fire. Mm. Uh, it's, you know, their midfield and forwards are, are playing some top-notch soccer right now. I agree. All right, so that's our new power rankings for this week for Simon and myself. Uh, we want to do one more thing here before we wrap things up on the show today, Simon. What we do. That? We had teased people on Facebook that we're finally going to do that drawing for getting over 500, 500 likes, just Currently like we Currently at promised. 536. But before that, Baxter, we have a special thank you to throw out there. Uh, this is for a two upfront t shirt, by the way, the drawing. And we'd also like to give a two upfront t shirt to, as I said, somebody who's been very supportive of yep. the show. He's been there not since day one, but since we met the man. It's been about usually how it mm, works. Eight months ago. Has it been that long? I want to say it's been maybe that long. Maybe when six did, months. When did you meet him? <laughs> well, we had met again at the Milwaukee Torrent uh, announcement party, but him was, and I had met before okay. that. I was going to say, I haven't known him as long then. Okay. Okay. Because okay. I was going to say, I was like, how long have you known so him? So anyways, he shares almost every post we put out there. Yep. He loves the show. He's talking to everybody about it. So uh, Anthony Larson is the man's name. He goes by Tony, I believe. Is that right? Yes, Tony. Yeah. Tony. So Tony... We're going to be sending you a two up front t-shirt. Woo! So Thank you, Tony. We appreciate you, man. We go right on our you. Facebook page and let us know what size t-shirt you wear. Let everybody know. Let the world know. Yeah, uh, we special want to know. thank you. Your special thanks, Tony. We appreciate your continued support. And now, Simon, we have a drawing, of course, as well. You, sure? Do you got any uh, drum rolls or anything uh, for us? Uh, I can give you some fancy music. Give me some fancy okay, music. I'll do... Um, we'll do... Whoop. We'll do this. Oh, I like it. I like this one. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm scrolling through the names on all of those folks who have liked our Facebook page. Yep. And the winner is Amy Horst. Amy Horst. Wow. Amy Congratulations, Horst, yes. Amy Horst. You will be receiving a two up front shirt in the mail. Just let us know uh, the sizing and address, of course, so we can ship that off to you. Yeah, Amy will we'll reach out to you personally. Yes, of course. But we, Tony, we know that you're listening to the show right now. Absolutely. So. Tony, we love Tony. Hashtag Tony for life. Yeah. So congratulations, Amy. Thank you to all of you. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we hit 500. It took a long time to get there, let's be honest, Baxter. But ever since then, it seems like Continue things are just up. exploding. Well, one of the things we always try to tell people as well, too, if you enjoy listening to two up front, if it's something that you listen to either on a weekly basis or a bi-weekly basis, you can go to Facebook and you can actually invite people to like the page, too. So we appreciate it if you go and do that. I try to do that on a daily basis. I know Simon tries to do that as well, too. Just go and hit that little, like, invite friends tab and just start inviting people that you think either enjoy soccer or just want to hear two guys talk about soccer for a the while. The great thing is it doesn't cost you anything other than two seconds to click. Exactly. And who doesn't have two seconds? But I either way, you know, we just, we sincerely appreciate all the listeners. Baxter... We've been doing this for about a year and a half, maybe a little yep. bit over now. I can't believe where we're at. And it's all because of our awesome listeners and the sponsors that just keep lining up and saying, yeah, we're going to support you guys. We like what you do. It's it's a bit unique. We love the fact that you keep a foot in the local soccer environment, but that your footprint's also expanding nationally. Exactly. Well, we've had a fantastic show. Special thanks to Seattle Reigns, Matt and Malice, for joining us. Coming up on Thursday, we've got some more exciting interviews. Stay tuned to our social media pages, which are what, Simon? Facebook, we are two up front. Of course, on Twitter, we are at two up front soccer. Along with that, he is at Baxter Colburn. I am at Simon Provan. All right. You can also find all the latest and greatest information about the show by going to our website, twoupfrontsoccer.com. Tuesdays and Thursdays, put it in your schedule. Set the reminder, tell your friends from 12 to 1 p.m. Central Time, live right here on Spreaker.com. Special thank you to all of you that tuned in. We appreciate it. He's Simon Proven. I'm Baxter Colburn. With our manager being the one above, we are two up front.